Providence won again, coming from 11 points down at the dunk to beat Marquette with two feet of snow outside on the ground. They are now 18 and two on the season. They are eight and one of the Big East, and they are in pole position to win their first ever Big East regular season title. RC, I'm going to you first on this one, man. How real are these Friars? You know I've been on the bandwagon, so I, I, I've, I've been teasing you guys about it. I, I think they're, they're legit. We know they're tough. We know they're going to defend. I think the thing that separates them this year is I think they got a closer, right? I, I think they know late game situation. They're going to Durham, and he's making plays. He may not make every shot, but he's making plays. And so Watson, they've shown they can score when Watson isn't. You know, Croswell comes in, gives them solid, you know, interior presence. And I, I, I don't I don't have them. I don't know how far they'll get in the tournament because I don't know how well they'll score it. But it's anybody. It's always a different guy stepping up and they compete their tails off and they got as good a chance as anybody. They're just so physical and so tough, Sweeney. It, it's 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 like they're the, the quintessential the the sum of the parts or the whole is greater than the yes. sum of the parts. So, right. Yep. They, they have. uh you mentioned Durham. He made so many big plays down the stretch. You mentioned Watson. He's just such a strong dude inside and gets to the offensive glass. Justin Manaya knows what his role is and what he's supposed to do. Nora Horkler knows his role and what he's supposed to do. They're just all bought in. And Ed Cooley knows how to get the best out of each of these dudes. Yeah, I mean, 100%. And I think the two transfer additions, obviously Durham has earned most of the headlines because of how clutch he's been late in games, because he solidified that ball handle position next to uh, Jared Bynum and next to, um, you know, some of the other guys that play in the backcourt, Alan Breed. But, you know, I think Justin Minaya is the unsung hero. And again, today he was really good. Mm-hmm. I mean, every, his defense is special. It's one of the things that has defined this team. It's allowed it to make the jump that they've made. But yeah, 14 today, attacking off the bounce, made a couple of threes, got to the free throw line. Like that, that's huge for them. So, yeah, I mean, again, at some point, like you can keep poking holes in all these performances. They're never perfect. <laughs> they just keep finding ways to win. And uh, they did again today. They needed a, a roll off the rim from Justin Lewis in the closing seconds that I don't know how that ball didn't drop through the net. But, man, I mean, these guys are just locked in button as one. I think they're all, all old guys who've experienced in different forms being, you know, a, a central piece to a team and now realizing, hey, how can I be the star in my role to help this team win? Right. I mean, think about Durham was, you know, the, the lead guard at Indiana didn't really win. You know, Harkler was the best player in North Florida, didn't really win. Nate Watson has been the best player or the second best player at Providence. Hasn't won a lot in the last couple of years. Uh, you know, I think Ed, Ed Croswell was the best player at LaSalle. Like this whole roster is former best players who've come together and bought in. And it's a credit to Ed Cooley because there's a lot of teams that are a lot, that, that are teams full of former best players who are not bought in and playing together like these Friars are. So it's a fun team to watch right now, man. It really is. Yeah, RC, I, I've always thought that winning close games like this is a skill, right? There, there's a certain level of confidence that you have to have and a certain level of ability in in moments down the stretch, in moments of close games, in moments where the pressure is going to be on you, where the fans are getting on you. And it doesn't feel like Providence has a lot of guys that, that came to this program, like Sweeney said, that were, quote, unquote, winners before they got there. So how does how does that work? You've coached before. You've coached at this level. How do you, it's how from- do you get those guys to book? Let's, let's be honest. It's preparation, right? I mean, mm-hmm. it, you go over and over time again, those guys get comfortable in it. And you'd be surprised at how many people don't do it. Like like today, everybody watched the Kansas City game, right? So they're home, but they get into the one-yard line, and Mahomes throws a pass in the backfield, and, and it ends the half. Like, you can't just – certain people handle it, certain don't. You can go over and over time again. But collegiately, you got to practice it enough that where these guys are comfortable – you're able to communicate it with them. And then once it happens, they just buy in. And they've won enough close games. They've won enough big games. You know, if it's, it's if it's today, it was Durham. You know, last game, it was buying them with the big three. There's always a guy that's stepping up. And they got Reeves back. You know, AJ had been out. Now they got him back. So you add him to the mix. That's just another guy that they feel comfortable with. And let's be honest. They just got as much experience as anybody else. Okay, so winning close games is about practice. I'm going to text uh, Kyle Shanahan right now. Have Jimmy G practice more. Okay, there we no, go. Good luck with to that. Go on that one. <laughs> Maybe he's gonna. Figure, I, we don't. We don't need to talk about that, man. That's part. That's, <laughs> that's part of why I got an empty glass sitting here on my table right now. Um. All right. I, I do want to ask you guys um, about Nate Watson 
and kind of the plays that he made down the stretch because that I think the great equalizer in college basketball this year, it's all people always talk about how it's the three point line, right? Well, if you look at the best teams in the sport, everybody's got a big guy this year. It, it's very much, it feels kind of like a throwback kind of season in college hoops this year, Sweeney. So I, I do think that Nate Watson is the guy that will allow you to be able to match up with just about anybody in college hoops this season. Yeah. I mean, he, I've honestly been, I think, underwhelmed by him statistically this season compared to what he was last season. Right. I think, you saw him last year as one of the best, you know, offensive weapons down low in college basketball. And, you know, this year at times Croswell's been a little bit better just because of their identity as a team has been so hard nosed and chippy and Croswell fits that so well. But I think for this Providence team to have the ability to go deep in March, they're going to need guys who can create offense and, uh, you know, be able to throw it to him on the block. It is one of Providence, if not Providence's best chance of creating offense. Right. And, and Durham's been great and he's, you know, always in the lane and gets fouled and, and does all these things that they need to win, but they need that post scorer who can give them opportunities to, you know, stay in games, especially against teams that really guard you like Marquette does. And, you know, Watson was huge in this game. He, he hit some, some clutch shots. He was, you know, active around the rim. And, and I think his, you know, steadily improved the other parts of his game too. you know, rebounding defensively. That was a real liability for him early in his career. I think he's starting to come around so far this season and you know it's 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 a reason they've been so successful but they need his ability to score for them to reach their ceiling and they got some huge buckets from him i'd also add his ability to pass like they're throwing it to him in a post and he's passing the cutters he's skipping it like he's not getting it like the black hole forcing shots all the time i mean he's getting it and hitting guys and they're they're almost playing him in that draymond green type of post up situation where he's getting it and they're cutting off of him and they're comfortable, obviously, with him on the ball, with the ball on the perimeter. And I think that's another added asset to his game that he's improved on. Yeah, and it's important against a team like Marquette, too, to kind of take the pressure off of you on the perimeter, is to be able to give the go- the, the ball to a big guy inside and kind of let him go and, and make something happen. Because if you're overplaying and taking people out of what you want to do offensively, uh, I think that having that guy that can go and, and beat anybody and win a matchup one-on-one is important. I want to ask you guys about Marquette. Uh, we can switch it up there. So – They had a seven-game winning streak snapped. Uh, They were up by 11 on the road in this game, RC. What do you make of this team? How far do you think they can end up going? Are you still – I'm still in on them being a potential uh, Sweet 16, Elite Eight kind of a team. Are you worried about them at all? No, they're going to defend it, and and they got Justin Lewis. I mean, that's – that's. I mean, he's a closer. I don't know how – you know, (laughs) Sweeney mentioned it earlier. I don't know how he missed that shot. He just – I thought it was in. I was hard in overtime when 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 he left his hand. But he's a matchup problem. I mean, he's comfortable punishing little guys when you switch. And you need a guy like that. You know, you need a guy that just says, hey, you know, he's 6'6", 6'8". I mean, 6'7", or so. And he's just ball skills. I mean, he's just a baller, dude. He just – he has it all. I think I, I think they got shooting, three-point shooting. They got guard play. They're just a balanced team. And we know they're going to defend. And as long as they do that, I'm not out on them. That was a tough game. They they, they had that game today, too. That, that that game could have gone either way. I mean, yeah, it, it was it, it was it, it, Providence made enough plays, but that that was nip and tuck down the stretch. They very easily could have pulled that out. Yeah, it was it was two tough teams that showed up yeah. in Providence tonight. Yeah. Um, uh, unlike our own Jeff Goodman, who was not tough enough to to come onto the stream and, no, and show no, his face no. to the Providence no. fans that uh that that understand that they're now they're they're no longer just the luckiest team in America. They're they're pretty damn good too, right, Sweeney? Yeah, they're they're pretty darn good. And and the defensive effort today, I mean, talk about Marquette and so much of why they've been good offensively this year is is Tyler Kolick and, and his ability in, in the pick and roll. He had zero assists today. Right. And, and he had to create a little bit more and score, but like the job that they did to take away that's so central to their offense is Kolick and the ball screen. Like if you're if you're an opposing team, you're scared every time there's a pick and roll because you know he's gonna find someone, you know they got a shooter somewhere. You know, Lewis is a weapon in pick and pop or you know, getting down down to the rim and like they just defended it well. So yeah, I mean, this province team has an unbelievable resume, 18 and two now. The it, it speaks for itself. The non-conference stuff with Wisconsin and Texas Tech is huge wins. And then now in the big east, they've pretty much beaten everyone there's to beat except for Villanova. So uh they they've they've earned all the love. Still think Marquette is right in that conversation, has the opportunity to go go deep in, in this thing. And 
you know, they really guard. And obviously Lewis is coming off of it today. Wasn't his best game, but for that coming off the best stretch of his career, best sustained stretch of his career, making shots, attacking, rebounding, doing everything. Um, this big East has been fun, but in these close nip and tuck big East ball games, province has found a way every single time. Yeah. And, and part of the reason he did not play all that well tonight was uh, he ran into a guy named Justin Manaya, who uh, I, I don't think I'm allowed to actually uh, quote what a Cooley said in the press conference afterwards, <laughs> when he realized that Justin Manaya was not ranked as one of the top 15 defenders in whatever award that gets put out, he wasn't on the watch list. Uh, but let's just say that Ed Cooley did not agree um, with that assessment. All right, big picture guys. Let's talk about it. Big East power ratings. I do think that there are probably five teams at the top. I've said this before. There are five teams at the top of the league that can all beat the hell out of each other, that can all beat any other person in the, or any other team at the top of the conference on a given night. So I'm putting you on the, uh, on the spot right here, RC. The best team in the Big East, the team that you trust in March to go the farthest from the Big East conference is? Providence. I do. So, I, I, you know, and you know, and I've said this, you know, I've been, I've been adamant about these guys from the beginning. You know, well before this streak, well before these most recent wins. I just think they got the resume. They've gone on a road. I like their toughness. I like their balance. And then seeing Durham step up and be a go-to guy for them. I saw, you know, Jared Bynum step up last game, make shots. It's just sometimes we focus on that star guy. And when that star guy for a team, they don't have a star power. They got dudes. So it's just a different guy. And that's dangerous because when teams focus on that star guy, and he doesn't perform to a level of giving you 25, then you're, then you're stuck. You're like, what do we do now? They don't have that guy. Watson may not score, they still win. Durham doesn't play well, they still win. Buying them turns it over, they still win. They're just fine ways to win no matter what. And, and I don't know if we can say that about any other team in, in the league. They, they, they win ugly, but they find ways to win. And they're not relying on one guy to say, hey, this guy has to do anything other than show up, play hard, defend. And I don't know if we can say that about anybody else in the Big East. Sweeney? I'm sticking with Villanova. Uh, I've stuck with them after the two straight 20-point losses in December. Uh, stuck with them after the Marquette home loss. I, I still got to stick with them as the team that has the best chance to win in March. It's still the most complete team, right? I mean, look, they have their limitations when they don't make shots, right? Every team does, but it's particularly magnified with Villanova when they do not make threes, their offense does not look very good. Their defense is good, but you know, is it good enough to win them games against elite teams? It's not, um, you know, but that, at the same time, they have all the experience you could ever ask for. They've got big time shooters. Brandon Slater's a, a monster defensively and guard multiple positions. I, I still think, and, and they've got Jay Wright on the sidelines. That does matter. Um, I think to me, if you're looking for a team in this league that has the best chance to go to a final four, it's building up a Wildcats. My only concern with both of those is I don't know if there's a pro on either of those two rosters. I don't know. I don't, where, where's the NBA guy? Where's the guy where you look at it and you say, I think that they can completely change a game, um, which is why I think I would probably go with Marquette as weird as that sounds. I think that they are uh, the most um, matchup independent team in the conference whereas they can kind of play against anybody they have the size and length and athleticism to take you out of what you want to do uh, I think that Justin Lewis is a game changer I think that Daryl Morcell is a guy that can initiate offense I think that Tyler Kolick is a guy that can initiate offense and they do all of that with all of these versatile switchable wings and they got Kerr Queth at the rim blocking everything so um, I, I think that it's it makes them very difficult to play against they've really bought into Shaka Smart's identity and I, I think they're going to be a really tough out in the NCAA tournament. I, I really do. You know, they, they, it gives me uh, pretty strong VCU vibes from uh, back in his Havoc days when he was uh, when he was coaching down in Richmond. But uh, listen, we got to head to our first commercial here. Uh, coming up next, we're going to have to dive headfirst all the way into the game that Kevin Sweeney was at today as Jaden Ivey hit a game winner to beat Ohio State. 